Welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, a special pregame edition, Steelers versus Cleveland, Thursday night, 8, 20 p.m. kickoff. What's up, Moan? Hey, DK, man. It's pre, yeah, it's pregame day is what it is. That's it's, what's up. It's, it is. It is. I, I'm feeling it to an extent. Oh. To an extent. I, I, and this is why I say this. I'm really, really tired of the quarterback slash Matt Canada slash throw downfield yeah. slash throw over the middle <sighs> stuff. And besides... It's a Thursday night game, Moan. Yeah. Like, who gets super fancy on Thursday nights? Who does that? I mean, you could, but you're not really afforded to, man. The, the the recovery aspect of it, and coaches talk about this all the time. Is it's funny that you know we're speaking on this, and we have a Thursday night game this early in the season, man. But with that being said, you want to get in and get out as quick as you possibly can. Allow the the least amount of damage to your body, to your team, to your your, your game plan that you possibly can. Most teams want to get to the run game. Get to this run game, get this match going, and guess what? We can get out with a dub. We control the game because it's such a short week that you got to kind of get ahead of the curve, and that is on the ground, and that's where I'm concerned, DK, on either side of the field, on our side, the Steelers, and <laughs> On Cleveland side, let's not act like they don't have a really good rush yeah, over there. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about running game versus running game, you're talking about arguably the best in the league at it versus arguably the worst in the league at it. I mean, this this should, just on that count alone, I mean, yeah. that's a heck of a foundation for trying to forecast how this game is going to go. Man, it's this. Stop. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. They have, uh, what is it, uh, 400 that rushing easy? yards. And that's it. We're just... Just stop them. <laughs> just, you know what? Us sitting comfortably, just like everybody listening to us right now in our chairs, that's what we're saying. Stop that two-headed monster, man. Since the time that we recognized how good Nick Chubb was to the time that we realized that, look, Kareem Hunt is there too. Like, he got cut and released from Kansas City because he had to. He had some issues, right, that happened in Cleveland or around Cleveland. And you, you got to say to yourself, that's a real good dynamic duo, man. So good that you had Kareem Hunt this offseason asking to get traded because he know he can go and be somebody's number one running back. Well, he is somebody's number one running back, technically, because uh, as Mike Tomlin pointed out this week, he said, I don't even know if I'd call them one and one A because their snap counts are virtually identical. They're like one yeah. or two snaps apart. Yeah. They just use them both and they pound and they pound and moan. They are going to do that or at least try that in this yeah. game. Yeah, and, and what's so difficult about it, though, DK, is it's on our side of things, man. Being able to stop the run hasn't been something we've been good at. We're giving up about four four yards of rush defensively. That's not the way well, we I, live. We gave them credit for stopping Joe Mixon on all but well, one play. Yeah. Let's be fair. But, but, of course, DK, let's talk about something, DK, that was also with TJ Watt on the other side of it, too, right? Okay, okay. We, yeah, we, 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 we can't dismiss that as if it's nothing. Like, we got to find answers to that because last week didn't allow that. You allowed the New England Patriots to kind of situationally run the ball on you, and you couldn't afford those types of games, man. And uh, like, like I said, just last week in general, it wasn't a good look as far as that was concerned, man, giving up 124 on the ground to the Patriots. And now you got to a team that's relying heavy on that. And then on the other side, I'm looking at, at, at us, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm saying, well, wh what are we? Yeah, where is it? Where yeah. is it? And, and, and why should we believe Hmm. That even on a Thursday night game, even with the Browns missing a couple of defensive guys up front, Jadavion Clowney's not going to play. Right. Uh, and, you know, Miles Garrett, we'll see. He's been in and out of practice this week. Uh, even, even in that event, this team hasn't run the ball against anybody no, for like, not haven't. even like for a series. Not they even for a it. series. Yeah, and we spoke just briefly before coming on and doing this, DK. Heck, we're talking about throwing the ball downfield. No, let's establish the run game because that end up setting up that down the field threat of, of throwing, taking the ball off of uh, or taking the, the top off of defenses, man. But this is this is the thing, though. You, you have the ability of a quarterback that can also run to Jacoby Brissett. And <laughs> if they even decide to go to Joshua Dobbs, they still have him in their uh, back pocket, too. And that's one thing that he does well. But those three guys that are toting the ball, man, um, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, and Jacoby Brissett, they are a threat. They're somebody that you have to look after. And this is the other part about the Browns, too. 
if you look at the the receiving from the backfield, these guys have well, Nick Chubb is four targets, four receptions, okay. And and uh four, I mean 28 yards. On the other side of that, you get Kareem Hunt. He's six for six for 40 yards, too, with a touchdown. They're good at that department, too. They got good hands, they're explosive, they're bigger backs. But on the Pittsburgh side, mm-hmm. <laughs> to swing this back, All it's right. like a like a tennis match of good <laughs> and bad. Is. Okay, <laughs> but why wouldn't the Steelers try something similar? In other words, it's a Thursday night game. Uh, you know, Najee Harris isn't going to be you know getting whatever twenty five thirty touches. Not that he's right. gotten anywhere near that anyway. Why not say, hey, listen, we're going to rotate you and Jalen Warren. Okay, we're just gonna say we're gonna we're gonna go back and forth with you guys. Yeah. Let Warren come in and attack holes. By the way, Moan. Yeah. By the way, let's not lose sight of the fact that when Warren came in, okay, and he got that five six yards by going straight in those holes. What happened with Najee all of a sudden after that? Did, did it open up a little oh, bit more? Oh, he sure did because he did started. It, hey, did it? Yeah. Look what that guy did. I mean, there's nothing better than competition. We speak about that all the time. But you said a second ago, your original question was, why don't we do that with Najee and Jalen Warren? Well, I think it's this, DK. They're not Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, though. As a tandem, they're not. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Okay. And, 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 well, do here? You, you know this, too. Why are coaches scared of rookies going out there sometimes? Well, you don't have enough stock in my emotional data bank to let me believe that I can trust you in these types of positions. Um, I'm hopeful that they do do that. I'm hopeful that this line, uh, this offensive line of ours moved them back. But the proven commodity of what Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt has been over these last couple of weeks says that they're legit. Says that, look, Nick Chubb might be the best back in the league right now. I mean, you felt that way for a while. I have. I know I, that. And, and he's an old school runner. And th- th- let me say this, too. He had to apologize for something this past week. And that, to me, is the most Cleveland BS I've ever had heard in my life. He's apologizing for scoring. Okay, that's what he's supposed to do in that moment where we milk out the clock and whatever. That is the most Cleveland thing ever. And I'm hoping for our sake (laughs) that it kind of scorns him a little bit and he got to find ways not to go uh, score in the end zone. DK, that to me was beyond They're acting like it was his fault that the defense couldn't get a stop. That is stupid. On that glorious note, we will talk about the Browns versus the Jets when we come back. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Browns versus Jets segment here. Um, Look, this is not spoken from some sort of Steelers perspective or whatever else here. I'd say it's more from a Pittsburgh perspective. Uh, The Steelers obviously had their own tough loss in their own tough way, but not like that. No. I mean, to have that happen, to have it be at their home stadium to have the fans be upset enough to throw a bottle at Jimmy Haslam as he's heading toward the tunnel over there. Not that I'm in favor of that. Just throwing, no, just, 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 okay. Just, just throwing it on there. It's part of the, part of the scenario, painting the picture, Moan. Uh, are the Browns still the Browns? I mean, I don't know how you can't think that after seeing that, man, you know, what's crazy. I kind of want to say no. Why? But they go out and sign a guy like Deshaun, and I'm like, and I love the fact that he got broke off like that. But it's clear that he's messed up the tilt of the NFL wor- world with, with with salaries. And you know I'm pro salary on that point, but that's the reason a guy like Lamar Jackson couldn't get paid. And maybe we want him out of the AFC North anyway. He goes to Miami. So they may, they may have did us a favor. But they do that. And I, I, let me just go to the, the cosmetic side of it. They put that elf in the middle of their field, okay? The what, elf what? really needed to come up in this segment. Oh, my god! It really okay. did. As much as I, I, I crap on them, they give me more content, okay? <laughs> they give me more content. And if you saw my tweet, I'm probably going to retweet it again. I put a crying Jordan meme on his face because I'm like, you're the Browns. You don't need to put a face on what you look like. Is that okay to say? 
I would think it's it's kind of like there'd be a point of pride in the fact that they're the only NFL team without a logo. It's I mean it, they're I mean Penn State has nothing on their helmets. It's just white. I mean they have a logo. But the Browns don't even need that. They're, you're just the Browns. You're just this orange blob, man. You know yeah. you don't need the Keebler Elf lying down on your fifty oh. yard line. You know. <laughs> I mean, it was if, fine. If, if, if you're the team, remember, you know, Terrell Owens going out and dancing on the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> star and whatever. Can you imagine going out there and dancing on the elf? The elf eyes might blink or something. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But not. OK, it was fine. I left that alone. But then again, here we you, go. You didn't. I, I was fine. I was good. The helmet to me signified what the Browns are. You're just there, okay? The no Browns. matter who you sign, yeah. you're the Browns. Other side of this, then they go get these big old uh, 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 Sandlot dogs they that they put outside of their intros. I'm like, really? Yeah, this dogs. was a, this yeah. this was the big thing for you guys to do. You wanted these big old dogs, massives, I guess, outside. Like there, nobody was asking for that. No. Just do the columns with the flames, like everybody else. Yeah, or just I mean, or again, it, it, when you're in Cleveland, and I'm gonna, this is gonna be positive here. You <laughs> you have that atmosphere. You have yeah. those you have those dogs. Dog with, pound. Uh, okay, you, but those people are real. Yeah. I, I don't know if they're real people, but those people are real. Yeah. And and it makes for a genuine atmosphere. Yeah. And then they had to go junk it up. You know, they they paint that big sign down there that says dog pound as if you didn't know what the hell it was. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. With yeah. Wolf wolf and the blades of grass and stuff. And it's like, come on, man. Yeah. We knew it was a dog pound. It was so much cooler when it was just a dog pound. It was. You know, and you had to explain it to a buddy. Yeah, and what's so crazy about it? I have respect for what they are. I, I clown no, you them a lot. Don't I, <laughs> you don't? I am here to press all the BS buttons in my domain. Yeah, but, but let me say this though: what I have respect for is this: their fan base. You can't yes. deny. Yes, no, seventy-three thousand people fill that stadium when they go zero and sixteen, and then they hold a mock parade afterward. Yeah. That is. That is respect. That is a fan base unlike any other in the literal sense in the NFL. It really Remember is. Remember when they when they had a get a win and get a beer campaign? I, I don't. Mm. I'm, I'm I'm not sure if it was me and Eddie that talked about that one. Get a win the game, get a beer campaign. You remember they unlocked the coolers with that? I forgot That's all about correct. that one. They did that. Um, but but they're passionate. I'm talking about cold. that stadium is by far the coldest I've ever played in in the wintertime because of that lake effect. Yeah, and they it find sucks. ways to still show up, man. But then. You look at them and you say, well, why aren't you good? You have the support. You have everything you need. Like, you look at the roster, DK, and they are good. They and got they, And they don't know what the hell they're doing. They Mon. don't. They even, like, seem to, they even seem to have a head coach. They do. I mean, that, that, how long has it been since we've been able to say that? I, I'm, I was almost afraid to say it. I'm afraid them going out. I, I, I was glad they went out and got uh, Kitchens and and all the other guys that they had down the line because I'm like, well, hell, this is just an easy game for us because I know they're not coached up well, okay? But they have good players. They got high draft picks. They seem to have a structure in place. I think they have one of the better offensive lines in the league, and they still can't get it going to a level of consistency. And then you mentioned it, throwing bottles at your team owner. Yeah. What yeah. life is that? Yeah. Can you imagine if we did All something like that? All I know is that still, it's got to be a factor. The browniness of the Browns, the ongoing browniness yeah. of the Browns has to be a factor in this game. When we come back, the only segment that matters. Hey, Moan. Well, hello and welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Time for the only segment that matters, the Hey Moan segment. And Moan has picked one out from the pile. I have. I got this one. And no, this is not Mitch Trubisky's uh, ghost account, okay? <laughs> this question that comes up. I thought it was very interesting. Really good since we're talking about the Browns, too. But this comes from Douglas Coley the second, not Junior, the second, man. Um, he goes, Hey Moan. So let's flip let's flip things. What if in Cleveland the offense actually shows good signs of life? Is it true that winning cures the distractions coming out? I still believe this offense can turn it around with Mitch. They've been stuck and he's been scared. He needs to play his game. I'm going to tell you a baseball story, Moan. 
What's before, that? Before you get to the answer, <laughs> I was in an elevator about three or four years ago with Steve Blass, the legendary Pirates pitcher, mm-hmm. broadcaster, and everything else here, and a pitcher who shall not go, not be named here, Okay, who's not good at all, had just pitched really well and won the game. And Blass says to me, that's a four loss win right there. And I go, what? <laughs> four loss win. And it made perfect sense when I thought about it. Because what it means is the dude was going to stay in the rotation. Oh. He was going to pitch for another month. And you were going to get four losses out of that win. And I got to tell you, Moan, that's the first thing I thought of when I'm hearing that that question right there. Because what happens if the offense just magically does well or Denzel Ward falls asleep again and lets the dude go running down the field behind him for no reason? What wow. happens then? What happens? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um- that 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 is a great freaking way to kind of sum that up, DK. Uh, but he, Douglas, he said they used to talk about. He said the base, but this is going back to the 1970s Pirates. Yeah. That they used to actually use that term. Like, don't use that, that guy. Four loss win. Wow. God. Okay. Wow. Um. Okay. So Douglas Coley the second man. I'd say this, Akali. I hope I'm not botching it. Um. With that, winning dur- does hide a lot. And I think that's probably a portion of the reason why we, you know, left that Cincinnati game and just was like, oh, we're ready to roll. We're ready to roll, man. We're good. Guys did this. Um, Mitch playing his game. What is that? What does that entail, man? Um, he wants to go down the field. He say he wants to press the ball a little bit, get a little bit more aggressive. The wide receivers are saying what they want to do and how they want to go about it, too. Um, but is does that mean miss take over for the rest of the season? I, I told you, I feel like we're still at that point to where it's just a matter of time. Even if you do get to that point and you say to yourself, well, he did do good against Cleveland. Look at his wins. You know, he ended up winning against division uh, opponents more or less than dropping a game against the Patriots in the AFC game. To me, I, I don't know if he makes it past week nine, regardless of the fact. Because, okay, you let's say you beat the, uh, the the Browns, okay, then you get the Jets. Well, you still got Bills. You got Tampa. You got Miami. You got Philly. These are all still good teams. It's a brutal schedule. It's a brutal, brutal schedule, schedule, man. Um, and, and if we don't see much out of him past this Browns week, I think the change comes. Like I said, me being a former player, I, I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's time to go ahead and make this change now. Let's go ahead and let this offensive line grow up a little bit more. Maybe he lasts two more weeks. I can't say it, but just in general, this is a gauntlet we're about to go through when it comes to, and I'd almost say with this Thursday night game, you get a mini buy, basically get 10 days off. You get an opportunity to prepare for a Kenny Pickett. And all signs point to, Kenny Pickett, honestly, being the guy, not just the guy. We know he's the guy for the future, at least for the foreseeable one. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like he has the ability to get his teammates to surround him. You know that matters, DK. He has that it factor. He has has it. Let's think about the University of Pitt. Nobody's done it like him since he's been there, before or after. Like, we're looking at a quarterback, Slovis, right now, that can't even be in the same room with Kenny Pickett. With a good team still. Here comes that Tennessee volunteer. No, I'm just. Uh, no, I, no I, I see what's going on here. I, oh, no. It was really tough call on my part, apparently, <laughs> yeah. since you're wearing a shirt. <laughs> you even didn't even see it. It was hidden behind the mic, behind, man. Behind the microphone. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is <laughs> some guys are winners. Some guys know how to bring the best out of other yes. folks. Yes. And the way they're rallying, I don't think this is fake sauce. The way. Uh, respectfully, I say this, the way we rallied around, De- uh, around Devlin Hodges to go get a win, and then you realize, oh, this is probably only good for two or three games. No, that was it. You guys knew in L.A. that that was it. You, you Cinderella, yeah. Cinderella had the ride and everything else when that happened in that soccer stadium or whatever, whatever that place yeah. was, <laughs> high school football stadium. But in this case, this is like, okay, look, the Steelers can't do this, but we can. There's a game in Cleveland, obviously. Yeah. There's a game against the Jets mm-hmm. at home. I want you to picture. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I was about to call it Heinz Field. Akersher <laughs> Stadium. I wanted yeah. you to I want you to picture that place that you're familiar with. Yeah. Just erupting. And you know the head coach would have the offense introduced. Mm-hmm. 100%. You know, 100%. 100%. No and, doubt and, and, about and, it, and, man. And, and it would be, you know, like they did the intros uh, this past week, the Patriots game. 
Mm-hmm. And he introduced the offense. And it was kind of curious because he had Mitch introduced midway through. Uh-huh. And the last mm-hmm. name was, and your running back. In the yeah. same intonation that Larry Richards always used for, and your sure. quarterback. Yeah. From Miami of Ohio, whatever, okay? Yeah. And, and, and he saved Najee for last. Why? Because you're not going to have him do all that and be the nope. captain and then have him get benched in another week and a half. Because truthfully, there probably been some booze behind and your quarterback. As, oh, they cheered him. They, as, they cheered him. I, I know, but... but whew, yeah, well, he, had to, he was running the risk, I know. Yeah, yeah. You run the risk of that, man. The fans, to their credit, cheered Mitch when he came out. And it was a loud cheer. They wanted him to know that they were behind him until they weren't. (laughs) Yeah, until they weren't, man. And we'll we'll get behind this group. But um, either way, I I think it's just a matter of time. I don't think we can save Mitch from himself at this point, uh, Douglas, man. And the only dog that we like is my Rottweiler. Where is Zeus at? Come here. Watch him. The only dog that we love in this world is the one that's about to walk in this door Zeus, right now. Him. Look at Zeus, Zeus has no right. W in his, dog right. it, in his dog. Okay. Goodness. Go. Go. <laughs> there goes now Zeus. He's, he's, that's what we want to do to the Browns. See him and leave him. Oh, now he's, now he's scratching himself back here. He's we can always still see doing him. some licking or scratching, one or the other, man. Okay, enough. That's <laughs> enough. That's enough. We will have a Ramon Foster show that does not involve Zeus licking anything. After the game (laughs) for Friday, for Friday. All right, Moan, we'll do it then. I'll see you.